Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gilcast. Rather, listening to this on the Sports Grid Fantasy Football Podcast feed or the Roto Grinders Daily Fantasy Football feed. I'm Davis Maddock, joined by Sammy Reed and Nate Noling. We're here. It's uh, it's Monday morning. We are licking our wounds, or I guess, Sammy, you, you're probably not licking your wounds. You scored eight more points than me, and you passed a huge train, which was my lineup, which was a, a massive train. And I'm assuming that you got there in cash. I, I I did get there, and you know this this week you guys taste my ass. So here we go. Here we go. Um, yeah. So so the three man whirling dervish scored 138.86. I scored 130.88, and Nate fished it up and didn't play Justin Jackson and scored uh, 127.76. <laughs> this this is what the people want you know there, there's just like the most obvious play in the history of dfs and nate noling just nate he was only 90 percent owned <laughs> yeah know, so, sometimes <laughs> sometimes you just got to play david montgomery man you know i mean he he did he did good but no. didn't the, Bear, the bears even won that game too i mean the uh, montgomery had the highest expected workload of any player in the week he had like 21 rushing attempts, nine targets. He had like five rushing attempts within the five. It yeah, feels bad, man. I, I don't know what else to say. I uh Christmas hangover, not great. Bunch of eggnog trying to get up to the gym this morning, wipe it off. It's oh my god, dude. Not been a good I, day. I went to the gym this not morning and weekend. just drug ass like I was Eeyore. I mean, it was unbelievable. <laughs> I just ate ate nothing but Oreo balls and than bread for like three i mean just i'm yeah. i'm sick i'm sick of myself and my and my that's, on and that's basically how i feel about my dfs lineups as well i mean it was just it is not a good sunday i'm just i'm just wiping crust out of my eyes you guys have already been to the gym like jesus well you know i mean you know you know how that goes some of us are grown up sammy some of yeah, us get some up. of us some of us have discipline <laughs> when it's my yeah, I, I i don't actually know how it <laughs> get goes. up and do my sprints don't know how it goes my uh it was it was it was my two-year-old's uh birthday yesterday very selfish of her at, at least you didn't at least you didn't football. have to watch yeah you didn't have to watch any of these disgusting games um all right okay so, actually there was legit some decent football yesterday it was okay it i actually okay. thought yeah. I actually thought from a real life NFL standpoint, yesterday was the best football we've gotten in like a long time. I mean, the Josh bar, Allen the stuff bar is set was low, bro. The bar is Joe set low. Dak low. Prescott. There was some good football yesterday. Yeah. There was, you know, to be fair, there was. Uh, so Whirling Dervish, 138.86. Uh, Jalen Hurts, we all played Alexander Madison. Sammy and I played Justin Jackson. We all played the same three wide receivers, Cooper Cup, Antonio Brown, Josh Palmer. Sammy and I played Rob Gronkowski. We all played... Uh, James Robinson and Sammy played the Seahawks defense and uh, I played Matthew Stafford, Alexander Madison, James Robinson, Cooper Cup, Antonio Brown, Josh Palmer, Rob Gronkowski, Justin Jackson, and the Bengals defense. Nate played Jalen Hurts, Alexander Madison, James Robinson, Cooper Cup, Antonio Brown, Josh Palmer, Dallas Goddard, David Montgomery, and the Bengals defense. So I guess your 2v2 was Gronk, Gronk and Justin Jackson, you turned into Dallas Goddard and David Montgomery. You you should have gotten punished on both sides of that. You should have gotten no. punished by Gronk, and you should have got. And I mean, you did get punished by. Justin I did get Jackson. punished by the Justin Jackson thing. Okay, let's get into it. I okay, so I I, I thought Dallas Goddard to Rob Gronkowski was not worth an eleven hundred dollar difference. Uh, Dallas Goddard's whopper, Dallas Goddard's target share. I mean, he just. I, like he is Rob Gronkowski to me. And I get that like with, with, with Evans and with Godwin out um, that you maybe could, could put more of a share towards Rob Gronkowski. But at the end of the day, it's not like Rob Gronkowski is going to start being targeted like a wide receiver. At the, like he got targeted the, 11 times in the game that Godwin and Evans got hurt. I, I just I, like, I didn't think Rob Gronkowski at 6.2 <laughs> was, was $1,100 better than Dallas Goddard in this spot. Already having Jalen Nate. Hurts. Nate, the I'm people just, the people have to know how did their whopper compare before this week? Well, Gronk's was like probably bad because he was playing with Evans and Godwin for a full and, season. And Goddard Goddard's is off the damn charts because he gets this massive share of twenty one target of twenty one pass attempts per yeah. game. Correct. It's, I mean, it's Goddard massive. 
Yeah, Goddard is just, yeah, the target share that Goddard gets week in and week out um, at $1,100 cheaper, I just didn't think was, yeah. And add to that, that I thought Montgomery in this spot was one of the top, like, I thought Montgomery's workload was very clearly unassailable the way that you hoped that Justin Jackson's could have been if Roundtree and Kelly weren't in the mix. Nate. And so it was one of those things that are in cash. I just, yeah. Nate, how much, how much did your model account for the snow game? Was this a snow game kind of, kind of deal where you saw the snow falling and you had, you had visions of Shady McCoy and when, and when Sammy uh, busted you on that a couple of years ago and you're like, I got to play the snow game, bro. It did help. It did help. <laughs> It did make me feel better, but <laughs> I mean, I had David Montgomery had 21 freaking rushing attempts and nine targets in this game. Like why would he not? I mean, I, I don't know. There was obviously great running. I'm, I'm not taking anything away from Justin Jackson. Justin Jackson was clearly like, there was four running backs that I thought were smash plays uh, in James Robinson, Jackson, Montgomery, and Madison. I think Ronald Jones was the weakest of the group. I don't think Ronald Jones was the play that everybody thought he was. Yep. Tampa Bay has made it very clear how little they like him. Um, and yeah, I think people who thought Ronald Jones was in the same tier as those other guys, I think was mistaken. Um, and I thought, yeah, just with the roster construction. Yeah. I felt better about the Goddard Montgomery thing and I was wrong and I got smashed. You did. I mean, not playing. I, I get, I get not playing Justin Jackson in tournaments because he was going to be absurdly owned and, you know, they, they were going to play a little bit of Josh Kelly. They were going to play a little bit of Larry Roundtree. But, I mean, just playing Eckler snaps. Like, I don't know. It just feels – <laughs> yeah, Austin Eckler for 4,200. No thanks, you guys. <laughs> I mean, it, Nate, it, and we talked about this in the group chat. I mean, Montgomery was a very good play. Like, neither of us were debating this. Yeah, it's just that you can't not play Justin Jackson like you had to play him over somebody else. And both Madison and and uh, Robinson were extremely good plays uh, as well. But forty two hundred the one, the one the that, role. I mean, come the on, the one man. that I didn't want to play. I didn't want to play James Robinson because I just hate him. I just am so biased against him. No. I wanted to play James, James Robinson was the best play of all. I wanted yeah, to he play. Was, he was the first guy. I wanted James to play Robinson Ronald was the Jones. best play of all of them. I had David Montgomery for a higher target share projection than Justin Jackson. I had David Montgomery for like nearly a 20% higher rushing attempt share than Justin Jackson. And Justin Jackson just had the lowest projected volume of those guys. And I get that per dollar, uh, he might've been a better play, but at the end of the day, the per dollar got me Gronk over Goddard, which just didn't, that was the upgrade that I was like, this doesn't make sense. I'm taking yeah, I, less I get, I get where you're going with it, Nate. I really do. I mean, honestly, but like at some point you need to like zoom out. Like, honestly, I think the guy you could have considered him over and I don't want to be Madison. hindsight about it is Madison only because, and, and you guys are going to roast me for this boomer take, but Madison wasn't so cheap. You know what I mean? Like he was definitely less than Dalvin. Oh, he Cook was a be. tier. He was a tier more expensive, but he's also a better player in a better role than any of these other guys. I'm, I'm not sold that he's a better player. So I've seen a bunch of like the metrics of like, you know, broken tackles over expectation, rush yards over expectation, this and that. And Dalvin cook is like way on the top end and Madison is below average. And yeah, but you got to watch the games, bro. If you watch the games, Madison just I mean, jumps just off the page. The you, if you nah, just watch, well. if you just watch the games, you'd understand. You, you guys have no, trumped my I'm, boomer take with another boomer take. So no, I Sammy, I'm with you. I, I think Madison was the weakest of that group. Like if I, I was, I disagree. To... I, I literally have maybe never disagreed with the take on this show more than I'm disagreeing with this right now. Well, it, it, from what I was seeing, he was like the second highest overall projected running back. So it's hard to get that out of your lineup, but I don't know. He was man. our like, he was our highest projected running back, I think. Was he? What did you have? What did you have David Montgomery's target share and rushing attempt share at? I I uh, to be clear, Montgomery was actually getting in some of our optimals. Um yeah. I can I can pull up. I'm not Nate, I'm not roasting you for playing David Montgomery. I'm looking, I'm roasting you for looking a fucking gift horse in the mouth and just punching it with just well, I know <laughs> obviously there are so many you can only play three running backs though. Like you have to prioritize and and make decisions on your overall construction. And yes, at a per dollar standpoint, I understand. I, I had David Montgomery for 70% of the rushes and 14% of the targets. 
And what was Justin Jackson? Uh, Justin, I would guess like less than 50% of the rushing 50, attempts. 40, and maybe 40, 40. I had 47 and 12. Yeah. Okay. So like in that, you, but he, you pay, he plays you he plays for the Chargers and was playing against the Texans. Yeah, I get that. And, and now you got you do got to add you do got to add the snow boost, obviously for for you you know you give David Montgomery the point one x multiplier for playing yeah. in the snow. That's yeah, fair. but but also but also Justin Jackson was in the dome. Yeah, and oh, the, and Chargers yeah. has got a higher game. team total. Yep. I yeah, I get it. I like. It's just Again, like it's it's when it, I'm it's wrong, one of those I'm, things. I'm on the wrong side because I took volume over efficiency. That's my like life. That's my yeah. But DFS, remember, like, remember thing. when like three or four weeks ago, you guys roasted me for playing Montgomery in like the stone cold same spot, and he got all the touches, and he just didn't do anything. Yeah, he he averaged one point eight yards per carry <laughs> in that game, but this game he he was up to two point one. So Nate really really Nate. went good. I think with Montgomery <laughs> in the spot. <laughs> <sighs> this slide sucked. Um, so did either of you consider not playing Josh Palmer at any point? Not um, after not, morning. not really. So I mean, obviously, one of the issues with this slate is that there was so much value, right? There was yeah. so much value. And my original build before uh Palmer got the role is that I had he, he was only 38% on the massive $50 double up Palmer. Yeah, I think because it was pretty late news on on Mike Williams, I think it was Mike Williams COVID. Yeah, yeah, I think it was in the middle of Christmas Day, and so people probably didn't react as quickly. Or yeah, as they're eating as the, eating prime rib, drinking eggnog. They're, they don't give a shit. Yeah, exactly. Like half everyone's already passed out, and you know they're having conversations about Bitcoin and politics with their with their boomer grandparents. You know, it's, it's yeah. a great day, but it, I don't think that people were like so sold. Um, and, and I think the holidays maybe played a role. I, I originally had a, a cup plus Justin Jefferson build before. That's, Palmer. that's what I was doing is, as I was using Noah gray and then playing a really expensive third wide receiver. Yeah. So it was, it, I was, I was like playing commit, right? I think, Which... I think Noah gray outscored Gronk. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it was, it, it was very tough. I mean, but that was the thing. Like once Palmer got in there, like we've seen that Palmer is really talented. We want shares of this offense. Um, and they really didn't. Well, Nate, have... Nate didn't, Nate didn't want any shares. Yeah. Well, they, they really didn't have like anybody else to, to throw the ball to. I mean, they ended up throwing the ball a lot to like more. <laughs> yeah. But, you Did know. you guys consider Keenan? Yeah, that was, that I was did. one of the things I looked at before Palmer. I, n- I, I never, build... con- I never consider Keenan bro. It's just, yeah. No. I had a build with Keenan. I can I just say the the clear fucking obvious mistake that that we all made, which was having all this money to spend and not playing the Eagles defense against Jake Fromm. I mean, what I, the Bengals defense, Falcons defense, like what? What I don't I I do not have a, a word for what I was doing, not playing the Eagles defense against. No, Jake I think yeah, I mean, dude, you don't want to like spend up at defense. Like, oh, I'm gonna spend. But I, we I'm were spending up at we were spending up at tight. Like, I like I played Gronk, but it's not like I was like, oh, Gronk's the biggest smash ever. I just did it because I had the money. Yeah, same, same. I mean, he was he was he was overly expensive, and you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't really I don't love Goddard either, and I really get the case for Goddard. Like Nate's right. I mean, his share of that offense is out of control. I think the guy's talented. I mean, he's basically their number one receiver. Um, but the challenge runs into the Eagles, like when they get up, they just have no interest in throwing the ball. And that can really create like high variance in that in that kind of spot. And in this game, yeah. they really didn't even target him that much, which I thought was interesting. He'd like crushed 100 yards two weeks in a row. And yeah, this game, he got like whatever, three targets, three targets and they weren't yeah. even interested. Yeah, it was it was super tilting to watch that. The yeah. Goddard thing. I mean, I think Komet was the other option at tight end that I that I thought of because I think my yeah. the one build that I had with uh with Keenan, it was getting down to Komet. How many how many weeks has Cole Komet been the most owned tight end in cash? And is that more weeks than touchdowns he scored this year? <laughs> oh, it's obviously more weeks than touchdowns. And you know, it's just one Does, of those d- things. Let's where... let's play let's play a little trivia here. Do we think Cole Komet has a touchdown on the year? I honestly don't know the answer to this question. Yeah, no, yeah, he's got no touchdowns too. He's got to have like two. He zero has touchdowns. zero. He's got zero. I just is he really. How many? How many does Jimmy Graham have? Because Jimmy Graham uh, again just like plays master cuck and just smashes. I, I believe and... Jimmy has two. 
Jimmy's Jimmy has three. Have. Jimmy's got yeah. three. And they're I all think huge. that's a typo. I think Jimmy has at least eight. How many two point conversions does he have? He's just always. <laughs> I mean, he, I, it does yeah. feel like every time you turn a Bears game on, Jimmy Graham just got targeted for some reason. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is tilting. But the Gronk thing yesterday, I don't, Gronk wasn't even the most tight, targeted tight end on the freaking team. No, Cam like, Cam Brake got his. Cam Brake, Cam Brake doubled his whopper. Well, Cam Brake Cam Brake cucked uh, Gronkowski too. It's very very tough. It's it, it sucks to like pay all this money for a tight end and have him cucked by another tight end. Yeah, when we could have we could have you're played you're playing Mark out my Andrews. thesis. You're yeah. playing on my thesis, which is why you play pay down for Dallas Goddard and pay up for David Montgomery in the best workload possible. Should have paid up for the Eagles defense, probably. Yeah. I mean, but the thing with DST was that there were other defenses. That there were, were like playing. seven DST. That that's um like that's the thing that's happening is all these teams are just getting fucking wrecked by COVID, is that yeah. every DST is in like a good spot. Yeah, I mean it, yeah. Atlanta was a viable place. Cincinnati. Let me let me tell you, place. Atlanta was not a viable not place. viable. The Detroit Lions and Tim Boyle did not turn the ball over, and Tim Boyle did not get sacked against the Atlanta Falcons. They 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 turned it over. They had an interception right at the end. Ola Kuhn. Okay, it. there we go. There we go. Yeah, they okay. they needed to be worried about. I early I, Ola I Kuhn. picked up I picked up the Falcons in like a couple seasonal spots after Goff got put on the COVID list, and I just spent the whole morning just being like. This was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Like, I'm so miserable. Why did I do this? It's well, it was a bad Falcons. idea for, for two reasons. A very bad idea. Number one, the, the Falcons are completely devoid of talent. So that's a that's a challenge. And then number two, uh, having Jared Goff out isn't necessarily a benefit. And I would also say that number three, it was in a dome. So you're yeah, but you're, dude, Tim Boyle, Tim Boyle had more interceptions than touchdowns in college. Like he is awful. Yeah, the Falcons and, and should the Falcons should feel really bad about what they did yesterday. How many times have Falcons burned us? Like whether it was Matt Ryan or Calvin Ridley when he was still playing, or, or, or Mike or, Davis. Mike Davis. Oh, wait, wait. Only wait only Corderell has has actually come through on that team, but that team sucks ass. I mean, just yeah, if wait, you wait, don't wait roster any tenements. of them, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, and then I mean, just just I got spit roasted by Matthew Stafford I mean what is this they score 30 points and he gets nine I mean what the fuck uh it was it was in a dome so I can't really uh like like you for this play Stafford is so good like just gets gets minimum guy gets like 250 and two every week and he gets 197 passing yards and one passing touchdown like what the Sony Michelle game bro I mean, they uh, found their they found their running back, and they like to put six offensive linemen on the field now. Oh, I, I, I didn't God. watch any of this game, so I actually don't know why he sucks the, so bad. It was because the Vikings were useless. Like the Vikings were beyond useless; they couldn't do anything. The Rams scored a defensive touchdown. So uh, the, the defensive touchdown always screws stuff up. It, it yeah, just it, it just ruins the fantasy game. What what was the thesis behind? playing Stafford over Hertz. What was, did he just project better for you or? He just yeah, he, he projected better. I had a little bit more money and Stafford feels safer because we've already seen these spots where Hertz is a huge favorite and they just completely shut it down. He barely runs. He doesn't account for any rushing touchdowns and he gets nine. I mean, we played him, right? We played him in yeah. the Lions. They scored 38 and he got like five points. That's that's basically the thesis. Yeah, you but, want you I want mean, Jalen Hurts in competitive games or when they're losing because then he's just scrambling for his life. I I, I guess yeah. I, mean, I don't think Jalen Hurts has ever worked out for me in cash games. I don't know why. I continue just, to do just this just stuff. surfing the old game logs. Jalen Hurts looks pretty good. I don't know. I mean, yeah, but I so just, does Stafford. Look, look at Stafford's game logs. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I like the I like the rushing floor. So I, I ended up. I think our team was the same, Davis. I just went down to Hertz and up to like Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, yeah. and that was that was actually really mentally weak because I only went to Seattle because I saw the egregious. snow. Yeah, no, I felt. I mean, the snow helped, but I felt egregious like leaving like six hundred bucks on the table, and I'm like, well, I'll spend four hundred to get up to Seattle. Um, good idea. Like it, that was stupid. This is mentally weak. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, Nate, Jesus Christ. I can't believe, dude, I can't believe you didn't play. <laughs> I know. Justin Jackson. This is, this is an all timer. I mean, honestly, like it, it, we're recording early in the yeah, morning. This is, this is going to go tilting, down. But... This is going to go down in the annals of history and people are going to forget <laughs> it. 
but <laughs> like people, this is not going to be one of the things that people quote about this show like years from now, like Sammy playing Adrian Peterson and Cash that one time, but it should be because it's really bad. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good the next day. You wake up and look at yourself. <clears throat> I right, really did not it. want to play James Robinson. I just want that on the record that I hate that guy. Well, that was that okay, was very Davis, tough. We're lucky take. he was we're lucky he was so owned in cash. But let's talk a, a little bit about guys that other people played that we didn't end up playing. I mean, Rojo, the people who Rojo played Rojo, I congratulate you because you're sharper than me. And uh, Ty- Tyreek was like bigly owned, like twenty percent. And yeah. that is why I didn't lose a hundred percent. Like Tyree getting like three or whatever is why I was able to get like 50% back. No, imagine not smashing on the Steelers. That's, that's really tough for Tyree. Well, it would, I, he didn't play in the second half at all. And I'm, I'm assuming that it's because he didn't practice at all this week and it was COVID stuff. I I'm assuming that's the only reason. Yeah. Somebody tweeted this yesterday and I was thinking about it. What are people, what are players looking like directly off COVID? Daigle, because, Daigle tweeted it and it's, they've all sucked. Every, every yeah. single one of them has sucked. Not, Not one it, guy has come off the COVID list and been good. There has to have been one, right? No. No, they all come back. And it's not only, it's not even if they were sick. I mean, some of them did have been sick, but it's because they haven't practiced at all. So they're all in, they, and, and not practice, like not even running, like not conditioning, like nothing. Yeah. Like literally sitting on the couch. I mean, how do you feel if you sitting on the couch for a week and then you come back and, and try to do something like you feel like shit? No, oh, buddy. I, I, uh, I've been sitting on the couch for three and a half years and every once in a while I try to go out and play, you know, <laughs> football on, on Thanksgiving morning. And it is. Yeah. And you want and like you want to die. It's yeah. terrible. Can can confirm. I mean, Madison was actually coming off of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Ken and Wong, who played the most snaps he's played all year. Yeah, maybe maybe Mad- Madison's the one that I like. Looking back at my lineup, Madison is, I think, maybe the one guy that I regret. No, Madison. Madison was on pace to just absolutely go nuts in this game. He got he played seventy five percent of the snaps. He was targeted four times. He got multiple attempts at goal line touchdowns. The Vikings just sucked in this game. Like they just no got Davis. Wrecked. I'm not talking about it from a result standpoint. I'm saying going into the slate. The David Montgomery thing, I actually think David Montgomery could have put up 30 here and you guys all would have felt like Yeah, idiots. but Madison Madison was the highest projected running back of the slate at 6,800. Like, you just are not not playing that guy. I consider not playing him. I consider, I, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I really liked Madison. I, I saw the projection. It was very I, good. I, I considered Rojo Eagles over James Robinson Bengals. That was the only swap that I was still I think Rojo was legit bad. I think the fact that people consider Rojo in the same tier as the rest of these guys is legit bad. Well, why do you, why do you think that? Did you think that he projected to have like a smaller share of targets? Like they, they don't trust him on third down. Was that kind of the idea behind it? Yeah. They very clearly have not trusted him all year round. There's all of these other but guys. Brady throws much, to running backs on early downs. He got targeted four times. He does much more. Sig- okay. David Montgomery, Alexander Madison, James Robinson, and then Justin Jackson. All of those guys had just so much better volume projections than a Ronald Jones. And Ronald Jones just very clearly has been given like Tampa Bay has taken every opportunity to not give him work. Like, why would we play this guy when there's those other running backs? It, it did feel good when Keyshawn Vaughn broke off that 50 yarder early in the game. And it was like, oh, the Rojo fish aren't going to get there. Um, he did end up scoring a touchdown. He, so yeah, he did he, get there, but I think if, if Vaughn doesn't house that, I think Jones, like, I think he got rewarded for more snaps after that. And I think had he like, you know, just been tackled by the first guy that should have tackled him there anyways. Um, I think that Rojo would have gotten even more touches because he only played like 50% of the snaps. They, they yeah, literally I'm, did give Le'Veon Bell two, two rush attempts. Two rush attempts. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that. It, obviously, Dude, obviously for negative one yard, but that's that's what happened. I wish James Robinson would have smashed and then all these people who played Rojo lose money. Okay, I mean, everybody played James Robinson, though. Like, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal. Well, he wasn't the most owned. The actual most owned was Justin Jackson. <laughs> I mean, who, did, just, who, who did punish the faders yeah even the fish got that one right i mean his volume was he got a he got a ass load of targets i mean that was that was the great part i think he only had 11 rush attempts he obviously ran good to get in the zone twice um but i mean nine nine targets for 4200 buddy Whew. 
Yeah, when you can combine their, those nine targets was, with 21 rushing attempts, it's even better. He was their <laughs> he was their leading he was their leading wide receiver. To be clear, David Montgomery had nine rush or nine targets and 21 rushing. We attempts. we, we yeah. get what you're saying, Nate. He was he was a fine play. You should have you should have played both of those guys. You should have played both. Yeah, you should have played you should have played Demon instead of Madison. Yeah. <laughs> to be um, clear, I'm tilting. Yeah, Josh Josh Palmer. I know we we touched on him earlier, but what about you guys? Did you ever consider not playing him? Were there other builds that you tried to get in or when? No, when... Guyton Guyton Mike and Mike Williams both being out pretty much lock. I wonder how many snaps he played in the end because I thought he might just play like all of them. I, I did too, and Guyton being out was actually a really big thing because he played ninety seven percent of the snaps. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he the, just, like, yeah. The thing for me was like that he had stepped really into Keenan Allen's role one for one when Keenan was out. And if, if Guyton was in, I wasn't actually positive that Palmer would play all the wide receiver two snaps. You know what I mean? Like, remember when, when, who was, who was the team that had the direct backups to the X and the Z and, and all that? The Chiefs. The Chiefs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Chiefs. So, you know, it was, it was one of those things where I wasn't sold. No, no. Not the Chiefs, the the, the goddamn Falcons. The Falcons. It was the, it it was was the, the Falcons, Falcons yeah. with Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus. and Campbell. <laughs> the yeah. Olamide. Yeah, yeah. I I think the guy news was huge. I, I I think the Palmer at his price felt like as must of a play as the running backs did to me. You know, and I think that's that like morning news changed it because I I don't think I I probably would have built with Keenan had that news not come out. Yeah. yeah, I mean that seems reasonable. It's it seems reasonable, except Keenan never scores a touchdown, um, except on island games. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's let's talk right. about the let's talk about the tourney lineups. I'm I'm ready to. Ready so, to spoiler alert: none of uh, none of my tournament lineups came with um, <clears throat> Joe Burrow and Joe Burrow and uh, T Higgins and, and Chase. I did I did play T. Um, so I guess I, the, the one I played in the red zone was Josh Allen, Alexander Madison, Ronald Jones, Cooper Cup, Stephon Diggs, Isaiah McKenzie, Hunter Henry, Byron Pringle in the Falcons defense. Just, you yeah, absolutely oh. need to see the 1.9 points from Hunter Henry. You don't, you don't love to see it. And you don't you, love, you, you don't love to waste this Byron Pringle. Absolutely. Pringle. And McKenzie combined for 50, bro. And it just didn't, it just literally didn't matter. It's like, oh I, I, I this, didn't... Is, this, this should have been an all timer for you, Davis. It should have been you, uh, people talking about you instead of Adam Levitan on Twitter today. I had, I had, honestly, I had like, I nailed the one offs this week. Like, my teams were fucking disgustingly good, but I just didn't play Burrow doubles. And so it didn't get there, but no money. Just a, like T as a one-off, McKenzie as a one-off, Pringle as a one-off. Like I, I played Pringle in every tournament lineup instead of Josh Palmer, and it just, it just didn't matter. But why, it, why, it's why just did disgusting. This, why did this happen? That the moment we shunned T Higgins and decided he was persona non grata in our cash game lineups after making like six of the first seven weeks, has he just become like wide receiver one? every week since well because the the reason we were playing him in cash was his role was so good and he was just running terribly and now he's just running you know hotter than the sun i think he caught every target that he had yesterday yeah mine, I, minus I mean, one but he was just like going up and randy mossing over double cover yeah but like he, he was getting he, incredible. he was getting was these not. same targets two months ago like the the game the game that we all tilted the most was the game against the Jets six six targets, four receptions, 97 yards, but he had the 50 yarder that he didn't haul in for the bonus. Um, and then the game against the Raiders two for 15. And that, that was the game week 11 against the Raiders. That was when we swore off of him was the two for 15 when we were just like, that's it. We're, we're yeah, done with but, this guy. I mean, it, but it's, it's so crazy that Jamar chase had all the big dick energy in the season. And then he just like transferred it to T Higgins and he lost it. it it's, I, I don't, I don't know how this happened, but. I guess I guess the nerds will say regression, but it's just, it's just a little bit of random variance. You yeah. know. It's also Joe Burrow actually good. Like really yeah. good. Yeah, he's really good. Joe Burrow had some incredible plays yesterday. Uh but I played I played zero percent Justin Jackson in tournaments and zero percent James Robinson in tournaments because I thought I mean, the path for James Robinson being bad is also I like just never in my life would be worried about him getting 30 and burying me because he plays for the Jaguars, who are uh, probably the worst team in the NFL 
they lost to the Jets yesterday, right? I'm not I'm not making that they up. They did. They did. They did. They lost. So they lost to the Jets. And then Justin Jackson, not that he was a bad play, but I just thought like, you know, he could get 16 or whatever. Um because he's losing goal line work to Josh Kelly. And and then the other thing that I thought was very important this week was just to really only play four wide receiver lineups since I thought three running back lineups were going to be such a heavy concentration in ownership. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with, I'd agree with that. I think um, I thought I, I built kind of weird cause I felt like we were so like lineup ownership was so condensed this week on a couple great plays that uh, I knew I wanted to pivot at running back. Um, and so I kind of made my pivots and, and built around that. So, um, my big pivots yesterday were Michael Carter and Rex Burkhead and just pretty much Rex Burkhead legend. So, uh, well, I mean, the rest of the lineup sucks, so it didn't matter. Um, and then I went with, uh, the Atlanta, the Atlanta stack of Matt oh. Ryan, Russell Gage and Kyle Pitts. Move. I, Move. yeah, it, it just, it just didn't work. I had two main stacks yesterday and it was Atlanta and then uh, Josh Allen stacks, the, uh, the Atlanta stacks. I don't know. I just thought dome <laughs> Atlanta, like if there's ever a time for Matt it's Ryan the dome! It's to do it. <laughs> if there's ever a time for Nat, Matt Ryan, but there isn't. There, yeah, there was, I, a, there I, was I a time for I Matt Ryan, Nate, and it was I, 2015. I can't, <laughs> I can't even, I can't even sugarcoat this, Nate. It's just, it's just not good. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, it was bad. Well, I, you know, I got to tell you guys, so I, so I, I really didn't play tournaments this week. You know, it was just like, it was Christmas week. So I really didn't feel like I had a lot of feel for the slate. I wasn't doing a lot of research throughout the week, you know, fantasy playoffs and seasonal got ahead to focus on those a bunch of stuff. Um, so I played one tournament lineup and it was complete ass. It scored 105 points. Wow. And it was a, yeah. Yeah, not 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 great, Chief. Uh, it was a Stafford double stack, uh, Stafford and Cup and uh, Tyler Higby. Did you do did you do the J Jeff bring back? I did the Adam Thielen bring back uh, off a. Of, what was it? Did he have COVID? No, or he had that? an ankle. He had an ankle sprain, and he got he hurt it in the middle of this game. Yeah, so I, I, I brought him back. I thought that would be a contrarian way to get exposure to a game that I really liked. Uh, I played off the wall running backs with Corderell and Miles Sanders. Corderell uh, disappointed. He had 14 rushing yards. He did score. Um, and then I just went chalky with the rest. Antonio Brown, Joshua Palmer, uh, and the Bengals defense. But this this lineup sucked. Really didn't put a ton of thought into it. Um, and the results were predictable. Tough scene. Well. Tough scene. I played a Falcon. I, I, yeah, I was gonna say at least you didn't stack the Falcons, though. Yeah, well, I did play one Falcon and recipe for disaster. Like, you're not gonna bink anything. Like, what are you gonna win? Yeah. Fuck all. So the the just the Burrow people, dude. They're they were just too good. They just smoked us. Like, there's just nothing, nothing you can do about it. I I can't believe. I mean, weren't they worried about the the divisional matchup the second time around? I guess that is a narrative, but I mean, it's, it, no, just, and sometimes in retrospect, you look at tournament winning lineups and you're like, what were like, what drugs were these people on? And the Burrow stuff is so simple. It's just the Ravens have no one left in the secondary and Joe Burrow is good. And T Higgins is good. And Jamar chase is good. And uh, all of these backup quarterbacks have just been peppering Mark Andrews with targets much to my chagrin. Uh, You know, Lamar Jackson never did this for me. Anytime I ever played Mark (laughs) Andrews in cash, (laughs) Lamar just throws it at Mark Andrews knees and waits for him to drop it. Like that's the only (laughs) thing that ever happens with when I play Mark Andrews. We have to, we, we, we have to give big ups. We should, we should congratulate uh, Levitan. He binked a quarter. So sick. So sick. Uh, sick. Adam's like legit. One of like the best dudes in the industry. Um, Super hardworking. Great guy. Won a quarter million. That's awesome. We saw, uh, Joe Holka proposed to his Viking cheerleader. Yeah, girlfriend. what a gnarly, what a gnarly proposal that was. Yeah, that was that was pretty sick. Just congrats to all these guys, man. Big W's all the way around. Yeah, uh, big and then, big and then, W's, and then we stacked the the Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also also big W for Davis Maddock playing Dak in cash like half the weeks this year. And then- <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> he gets he gets 40 and a half and i don't think i don't think the last two times i played dak he got to 20 combined yeah he didn't get to 40 combined over the last three weeks davis played him davis gets off of him and he just literally had 300 i didn't i didn't get off half. of it i buddy half. buddy if he would have been in the main slate i would have ran it back again i guarantee no, it i not. guarantee no, it if the if the, me davis maddock if i have the choice between stafford or dak i guarantee i am taking dak prescott it's not even close yeah, I, I believe him on this one. I'm, I'm I'm taking this one. He also ran four times for 21 yards. It was like the first time we've seen Dak take off consistently. Um, it was kind of. I cool saw a see. bunch of I saw a bunch of smart football people saying that the Cowboys' offense was never as bad as we thought it was. They were just getting shot in the foot by penalties and like near misses on third down and stuff. So I'm I'm choosing to believe that is true and not that it was just an all time anomaly game against the awful Washington football team. I, I don't think it was an anomaly. I think this is this is Dallas. Like they have an incredible defense and they have the weapons on offense and Dak has always been elite. Like they're gonna be good. They're gonna yeah. be tough to stop. Yeah. It'll be it'll be good to 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 smash them in the playoffs, maybe some home games in the dome. You know? Are we gonna are we gonna talk to Sammy about what it was like to watch his Steelers? Um, I, I saw an amazing <laughs> I saw an amazing no. graphic that the last time the Steelers went scoreless in the first half it was 1940, which means that only World War II stopped them from scoring in the first half, and then the <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs. The year Ben Roethlisberger was born, it's so bad. Like they're <laughs> like anytime I feel bad about the Bears, I then get to watch like the Steelers play, and I feel better. Like, at least that's not my team. At least that's not my team. The Steelers are just, it's pathetic football. I mean, it, could we have predicted that Ben Roethlisberger would turn into this boomer who, like, refuses to do play action or have any pre-snap motion or anything like that? Um, the only saving grace is that Deontay Johnson did continue to, to smash. He scored a touchdown. But did, he, did he catch it from Mason Rudolph? Uh, he did not. Okay. He did not. Uh, but he did But he did fumble. Um just just un, untouched i mean it was just like well, he, I he mean, is a beta the steelers have no interest in, i don't i don't know how the steelers have like a 500 record it's really a shame on the nfl that this is the case but yeah you know what are you gonna do what are you gonna do yeah nothing you can do that's the best team to... in the nfl they just they just don't know it yet yeah how about the bears matt and aggie going for two i know how about it He's just, he got his guy, he got his guy Foles in there and he felt comfortable doing anything. Yeah. I can't believe I played the Seahawks defense in cash, like against Nick Foles. I mean, it was the snow. The snow got you, dude. Don't lie. It did. It was mentally weak. You were like, they're going to be slipping and sliding out there. Yeah. No, I, the snow, it's, it's a powerful thing, dude. The ball is going to come out in weird ways, take some funny bounces. You know, this is a recipe for a touchdown. I thought it could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get out of here. Everyone, thank you for uh thank you for listening. We will uh we'll be back next week for a very weird slate. 14 games on the main slate, no Thursday night football. Uh I think there might not even be Sunday night football. I think it's I think it's like a, there's just a Monday night game. So we'll uh we'll enjoy that and uh be back later, dudes.